What's up? What's up, YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna sh oh! In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the limiter filter. Let's dive right in. What is an audio limiter, you might ask? An audio limiter acts similarly to an audio compressor with a few minor differences. Uh, when you compress an audio source, what you're doing is applying some reduction to that audio signal. A limiter takes compression to an entirely different extreme. Limiters are compressors with an extremely high ratio, meaning when setting that threshold, you are setting a limit to the audio. You're setting a ceiling to that audio signal. You're setting a point at which the sound cannot exceed a certain audio level. It's more like a brick wall. Some limiters are even referred to as brick wall limiters. For instance, the limiter that is built into voice meter is considered a brick wall limiter. Limiters are generally used in the mastering process when mixing a track. Limiters are used to reduce or limit the volume level of specific instruments or specific tracks within a song. Um, it's, it's used to bring more clarity throughout the entire audio mix and you can use a limiter strategically to limit certain sounds that don't need to be as loud as other sounds. So the limiter is an extremely useful audio mixing tool and it should be used when, especially when mixing your tracks. There are two types of limiters. There is the full band limiter and a multi-band limiter. When you are adjusting the EQ for tracks, when mixing with EQ, we, ref we often use the term band. Band refers to a specific range or a specific frequency that has its own set bandwidth within an entire frequency range. So when we're talking about a limiter, the full band limiter can adjust all frequencies or the full entire band of the frequency spectrum. So in other words, it's going to limit the entire audio signal versus limiting a specific frequency range. A multi-band limiter has several frequency bands at your disposal giving you the option to adjust or limit specific frequency ranges. As you can see on the screen now, the two examples below, the full band and the multi-band, the full band is limiting the entire frequency range, whereas the multi-band is only limiting a section within that frequency spectrum. The multi-band limiter can be used as a strategic way of getting the EQ mix exactly how you want it. You might notice that there's some bleeding in the high end of the song and you might need to begin adjusting that with a limiter. Using the multi-band limiter function, you can target the specific frequency range that you need to limit. When using an audio limiter, there are a few things you need to be aware of. When limiting, you can cause what is called clipping. If you set an attack and release time that is both at zero, you will cause clipping. What it's going to do is clip that audio signal and make it squared. We'll talk about that more in just a second. What you'll notice uh, a brick wall limiter doing is it has an attack time set to zero, but the release time is moderate. It's a little bit slower on the release time. So what you'll see is at the beginning of the audio signal, you'll see it kind of clip and distort there for a second. And then the audio signal is then limited um, within the threshold. If you set a limiter with a moderate attack and release, what you'll see is that audio fade from louder to quieter within the threshold at a slower rate causing a gradual change and not distorting the audio at all. When recording a track or live streaming or recording for a podcast, you need to be aware of clipping. clipping. Clipping happens when an audio signal gets squared off, as they say. Sound engineers typically avoid clipping as it creates a distorted sound signal. 
Limiters frequently are the cause of this clipping. When a signal wants to exceed a threshold but can't due to the limit applied on that audio signal, that signal gets squashed and scrambled to fit below that threshold causing clipping. To avoid clipping, you want to be sure the output signal does not exceed zero decibels on the finished product. You can apply that same logic to live streaming. If you're using an application like OBS, you want to be sure that the audio level of each one of your audio sources is not exceeding zero decibels because that will cause clipping. Most sound engineers avoid using clipping outside of the mastering process, but if you are a live streamer like myself and the majority of the community within my Discord server, you actually need to utilize the limiter filter live. I'm currently using a limiter on my microphone um, to avoid a certain audio level so that the, the mix when and after the recording is perfect in the way that I want it. The reason we need to use a limiter is to avoid things like copyright with background music, but also you can mix and master the audio for your live stream perfectly meaning you will never exceed a certain level of volume by setting a limiter properly. Not only that, but you can avoid your music audio or browser audio from if you're doing like a request feature where your audience is able to request videos to play live on stream and they do the old ear rape thing. That ear rapey audio won't exceed an audio level so that it doesn't hurt the ears of your audience so it will never exceed an audio limit. It is a very useful tool that I use for my stream as well. And I'm gonna quickly show you how to set up an audio limiter within OBS. Before we jump over to OBS, I want you to hit that like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you like content like this, I literally have so much content to offer. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you are in need, in need of one-on-one -on -one help or some more help with, or more information about this type of stuff, we offer free help in my Discord server, especially when it comes to setting up things like voice meter or OBS, so on and so forth. So feel free to hop in my Discord and holler at my, holler at my boys. So what I'm gonna show you uh, how to do is set up a limiter filter on your microphone. If you right click on your microphone and go to filters, hit the plus sign under audio filters and select limiter. It will pop up with a limiter filter. I already have one here. So what we're gonna do when setting up a limiter is we're setting the threshold and the release time as we talked earlier. In OBS, you don't have an attack time. The attack and release time limiters are usually built into DAW programs. So what we're doing with this limiter is setting the limit, which is going to be the threshold. So on my microphone, I have the threshold set to negative 10 decibels. That means no audio will exceed negative 10 decibels on my mix. This is the, this is the highest limit that I have set for all my audio sources because I want my microphone to be louder than all other audio sources. I also have my limiter set up in a way, as you can tell, where my volume barely, just barely touches that limit. That way the audio signal is not getting clipped or distorted in any way. Um, I want to avoid that at all time, at all possible. What I suggest doing is setting a limit at least at negative 10 decibels. I would go all the way up to negative five decibels but I don't know if I would go any higher than that. You want to avoid exceeding zero decibels. Anywhere from negative five to negative 10 should be a safe zone for your microphone. And then the rest of the mix should land somewhere a little bit quieter than that. You do not want to use the limiter filter on OBS to cut off audio signal for other sources. In other videos, we will discuss ways that you can compress that audio or reduce the volume of those audio sources so that you do not clip or distort the sound at all. The release time is set to 60 milliseconds. This is a fairly moderate release time. It's what I suggest going with. I would go with, uh, with any release time set from 60 to 100 milliseconds. 
but adjust it to your liking. If you set the release time to zero, you will most likely clip that audio signal. I would suggest, like I said, a safe range from 60 to 100 milliseconds. The limiter tool is a very, very useful audio filter, but do not use it as a volume control filter, meaning do not set it at a volume limit in order to control the volume levels when live streaming in OBS. When you do this, you might end up distorting that audio. So I suggest learning how to use that limiter fil uh, filter properly or watching one of my videos on setting up voice meter with OBS where I talk about applying filters in OBS or just subscribe to my YouTube channel as I develop more videos. I'm going to cover this subject more. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would hit that like button and subscribe because I release content like this like crazy. If you would do me a solid, also check out my Patreon page. If you're a member here, you've been around for a while, or if you get free help in my Discord server, definitely check out the benefits of joining my Patreon. It's three bucks for the first pledge. I want to thank you again so much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace!